Hello again. So this first group of catch-up comments has to do with the slide on blackface minstrelsy. And there you see a uh, poster for a very popular minstrel troupe here in America. Now, if you say minstrelsy, you could be talking also about a very ancient form of musical performance. And um, that, not, that is not necessarily the same thing as blackface minstrelsy. As Dr. Sartwell pointed out in her guest visit, perhaps blackface minstrelsy is one of the few uniquely American entertainment forms that we have come up with. Um, but we can't really underestimate its importance, which I think your book might do a little bit of, us underestimating its importance, that is. And you can find information on blackface minstrelsy on page 294-95 of your textbook. There are a couple of things that I think would have been very worthwhile to have a little more discussion on in class had we had the time. One of them is to discuss one of the actually positive outcomes of blackface minstrelsy. And that, I'm actually thinking of two. And the first one is that the art form helped to preserve a lot of material, particularly songs that were brought over by slaves, and document them. Although that uh, documentation was so that it could be exploited by white culture in the short term, in the long term, when minstrelsy finally left our uh, American stage for the most part, now we still have a lot more songs written down. Uh, so even though that is a perhaps dubious benefit, it is one nonetheless. Someone writing down literature and music that other people were not given permission to preserve. The other positive that one could perceive from the history of blackface minstrelsy is that eventually it became a vehicle for African American performers um, and performers from other countries who are of African descent to find success and economic power. Now you may wonder, well, were they selling themselves out? Or were they laughing all the way to the bank? Of course, as a relativist, as always, it depends on how you look at it. But um, one of the most famous uh, performers of color to come out of the minstrel circuit was a performer by the name of Burt Williams. Burt Williams came a little bit later in the history of minstrelsy than the, he was more turn of the century. And he, um, he had dark skin. I believe he was from the, um, the West Indies, perhaps from Jamaica. But he uh, adopted a minstrel character. And he um, became famous for his performances as this character, this sort of down on his luck, um, shuffling, sad person. And he had, uh, characteristically, like other minstrel performers, he had burnt cork to make up his face and um, had the sort of wider white openings around the eyes and the mouth, just like what was recognizable as a minstrel performer. And he became extremely famous with this character. There's a very famous song called Nobody that is a very funny song, and um, it's it's a ironic song and kind of a sad song that he was best known for. Now Burt Williams in fact did laugh all the way to the bank and this was perhaps um, at his own suffering but he did make a whole lot of money. In fact he was so valuable to the Follies by Florence Ziegfeld, a very very wealthy producer of a variety show called Ziegfeld Follies that 
when there was racial tension between Williams and Ziegfeld's white Ziegfeld girls, he stated that he would much rather keep Williams and fire all of his chorus girls because Williams was the one who was unreplaceable. So that, I would say, um, in spite of the irony of black performers literally blacking up in order to adhere to the audience favorite and, and the audience expectation of a character in blackface being comedic, there was quite a bit of economic opportunity that was offered to people of color in this art form. 